Hello and welcome to the video. This video is a first look at this stuff here. Now this is something I'm really excited about getting in and having a play with. This is the new FPV combat system. It's available as a full size kit and also as a little baby version as well. Uh, and it's basically laser tag for FPV. Now I, when I first looked at this, was immediately thinking, okay, well I can put it in a couple of planes and me and my friends who kind of play at chasing each other uh, via FPV through the skies anyway. It'll be fun to add the ability to kind of shoot to each other and have like a real time laser tag with FPV. But actually systems like this are really useful for lots of different types of model. And the way that this one's been put together is really interesting because you can change the weight of how powerful your guns are, how uh, much armor you're, you have, uh, how much ammunition you have, and you can play with those things, so you could just as easily put it on radio control tanks, cars, boats, planes, quadcopters, and these really small versions in particular could be cool to put on things like whoops and the smaller quads that you're going to fly indoors. So in this video, this is just a first look really while I unpack it and stick it into my model. Surprise, surprise, I'm putting it into the Atom RC Dolphin, which is kind of what I've been waiting for to put it into, and then hopefully in the next video or two uh, with the couple of kits that I've got here. Uh, Adam, one of my flying buddies, is going to put it in one of his planes and we can actually have a go at trying to shoot each other down. Now the system itself is not completely plug and play. There is a little bit of soldering required and depending on how you want to set it up, there's a super basic way and there's also a fully featured way. I'm going to set up the one with the fully featured stuff. Now there is an optional 433 megahertz radio module. These are a handful of pounds or you know a handful of dollars from places like eBay. Be very careful when you're ordering one though because there are lots of clone units about and by plugging this radio into the FPV system all the FPV systems can actually talk to each other when you're flying around and that means that you not only just have standard kind of you know game modes where the screen will flash because it's all in the on-screen display as well uh, and let you know that you've been hit by somebody but with the radios, it allows you to let you know who's actually shot you and also let you know you've got a confirmed hit in your screen if you're the one doing the shooting. But also engage in things like team games and other modes like capture the flag as well. So it's quite a comprehensive system. Now, those of you that uh, have been playing with the kind of technology for a while, uh, you'll be aware of another system called, I think it's called Ace Combat. Uh, the cool thing is, is that this is actually has a mode as well that is compatible with Ace Combat. So the gentleman behind this and the gentleman behind Ace Combat have kind of agreed to help them kind of play together. So it's one of the modes you can set up is actually the compatible mode. So if you have a mate that has Ace Combat, you have FPV Combat, still means that you can do the basic flying around and shooting at each other. So let me go and open the box and go through some more of the specs and show you what's actually inside here. So here are the two units that you can get. Uh, you can get extra guns and sensors and things. This is the mini version. Uh, this is just the board itself along with a single gun and a single sensor as well. Uh, this is very small and lightweight. Again it's going to be perfect for indoor scenarios, uh, the power of the LED, the gun LED, which is that little piece there, is nowhere as high as in the main system. So maybe if you're flying inside a sports hall or a tiny whoop or that kind of stuff, this would be a great option. It only runs on five volts and there's a little bit more involved in getting it wired up uh, because things like the voltage regulator are missing, but full instructions on how you set it up are on the website and it's not particularly difficult to get it all working. The one I'll spend a little bit more, more time talking about is this one, which is more like the standard kit uh, and the one that I'm about to put into my plane. So as well as a nice set of stickers, uh, and this one actually, I've actually put my radio in here. This again is that 433 megahertz radio. This doesn't come as part of the kit, uh, but I would recommend getting hold of one uh, just because it allows you to, the, the systems to communicate with each other. But in here we have uh, some cables to help you to connect everything up. Uh, nice, decent sized cables. Then we have the little flight controller itself, well, it's not a flight controller, the little board for the system. Now on here 
everything is nicely labeled. Now I will show you what mine looks like in a middle, minute. I've modified one already uh, to put it into my plane so it's kind of plug and play. But the way it works is that the telemetry uh, kind of radio, communication radio kind of fits over here. We have the connection for the camera, the connection for the VTX. The camera is powered by 5 volts, so you don't have to worry about that. VTX has battery power, and then you have uh, the connection here that will actually power it directly. Then these connections are for the PW. Um, in to trigger so you're going to set up a channel on your radio that when you flick it it's going to cause the guns to fire and then we also have a PWM input and output and the way that works is you can have that connected to and know maybe ailerons maybe your ESC and it will cause uh, the PWM, PWM signal to wobble about when the system is hit and that gives you as a pilot a really good indication that something <laughs> that you've just been struck. Uh, I'm not going to use that initially for my setup. Again, that's optional. Then we have connections for things like um, LEDs and stuff like that. So they can be programmed to do stuff and to flash when things are happening. Uh, although this has the on-screen display that's designed for use with analog FPV, uh, it also will work with the DJI HD system, but what you need to do is really use the WS2812 adjustable LEDs connected here to kind of you know be in view at the bottom of the image to kind of let you know what's going on. Then we have the connection for the infrared sensor and the guns, so let's talk about those next. The infrared sensor board kind of looks like this. You get one in the kit, however you can daisy chain them using these additional ports. So uh, this is pretty straightforward, you're literally just going to have to Connect one of the cables to the board, like that, and then connect it to the sensor, like that, and that is that piece done. Next piece then we've got is the guns. It's going to be tricky to get out. There we go. So this is the little infrared gun. Uh, actually has two modes, a high power and a low power mode. This is an awful lot more powerful than the little infrared LED that works in here. So there is kind of two ranges. So if you're flying at night time, you can put it on a, a lower power setting. It only comes on for a brief fraction of a, of a moment uh, and it consumes a massive amount of power while it does that. Uh, so this is an incredibly bright LED. You do not want to be looking at this when you fire it. But again, you'll notice it's got two lot of pins at the back. And you can see that. So this needs to go at the front of the craft. You need to plug it in. You can plug it in either way. It doesn't really matter how you plug it in because one will give you the high power setting and one will give you the normal power setting. And then you plug that into the gun port. And again, there's two gun ports on here. Or uh, what you could do, try and do it around the camera, is you could also have another gun, you could buy another one and have it connected on this side if you wanted them maybe mounted actually in the wings. Then all the other connections are pretty much as listed on the website. So what I've done with mine, let me just push it out of the way and bring the board in. This is the one that I've modified a little bit. So the only things that I've done, I've connected a flying lead for power uh, because if you remember I left myself a flying JST lead in the model because I kind of knew I was going to be doing with this. Uh, I have put four pins on here for the radio system because I want to mount the radio as far away from other electronics as I can get it. I might have to play with that but rather than solder it directly onto the board I'm just going to be able to mount it where I want. And then I've got these two flying leads that I've put on here. Again, these aren't necessary. You can directly solder your VTX if it will run off battery power and your camera onto here. But as it is, I've already got iNav in the model. And for the testing, I just kind of want to unplug the camera and VTX from the flight controller and plug them in here. So that's the only real, really things that I've done. Uh, again, means that installation, particularly with these solder pads, does require a little bit of soldering, but it isn't tricky to do. So let me grab my plane and let's very quickly hook it up and then we'll power the system and I'll show you how to configure it. Now to configure it, you have to have 
the infrared sensor installed because all of the menu and all the control is actually done via an infrared control. So if you've got an old one knocking around from an old TV or VCR or something and we're about to put it in the bin, don't because it'd be perfect to set this up because if you power it up and you're holding a button and these uh, little infrared receivers here are receiving a signal, it'll go into the menu and allow you to set it all up how you want it to work, um, define and pick the game kind that you want to play, uh, even potentially join uh, a team because uh, there are team games in the FPV system as well. So let me just grab the Dolphin and show you how I've installed all this into my model ready to put this inside. So here we have my Atom RC Dolphin. I uh, love this model. This was one that I kind of uh, got in with this idea in mind. Now I've already plugged in a couple of the cables ready for the flight controller. Uh, we have the 433 megahertz radio down here. Uh, I have a cable coming out of the receiver that's going to operate the guns. I have a power connection. I have a cable which is that one there, that actually goes all the way from there, all the way to the front of the model, and that's where my gun is installed at the front, trying to line it up with where the camera is looking, because uh, hopefully that will help me be more accurate. And then to, to plug it in is going to be pretty straightforward. So all we're going to do is we're going to pop the board on here, I'm going to have to install the nuts to kind of keep it into place, 30.5mm uh, mounting holes, then I'm going to plug the gun extension cable onto the gun. I'm going to plug the RC input into the right connector. I'm going to connect the power uh, like that. In fact, you know what, we'll power it separately for the test. Uh, this is my camera, so I'm going to plug that into this little extension. And again, the reason I'm doing it this way is because I want to be able to swap between the two and I might actually in a future video figure out how I can map it all together to have it all working. So that's the camera installed. The video transmitter plugged into the VTX. Again, we're being careful with polarity and make sure that we're not connecting anything the wrong way around. Okay, that's that done. And then the only other thing is the radio, which kind of goes on the back. And that's it. Now, the only other thing we could do is we could actually install uh, one of the outputs, things like the ailerons, through this. And then it would uh, do the PWM stuff and make the ailerons kind of jitter when it was hit. Uh, I'm not going to do that for the initial testing. I'm just going to use it so that the um, when I kind of operate the guns, you know, pull the monetary switch on the radio, uh, it's all going to work and it should be fine for the test. The last thing I've got to plug in is the sensor. I've literally hot glued it on the top, just a blob of hot glue, stuck it on there, uh, cut a recess, so the infrared sensor just needs to plug, and there we go, the FPV system is in. So let's power it up and do the configuration. So here we are on the bench, let's just make sure that I've connected everything properly. I have my remote, I've put the FPV combat sticker on it, so uh, I know what it's re related to in months from now when I find it in the drawer. And I am going to use that to set it up, but not quite yet. I have my wonderful Wi-Fi uh, smoke stopper -y thing. Uh, I'll put a link below to this. I actually use this far more now than I ever did before. It's plugged in to power the system. Let me plug in a little screen, and we're just going to check for the moment. I've got the camera lens on whether or not we get a picture. So let's apply power. Whee, hey, hey, look at that. We have battery voltage, which is gonna be blooming handy to fly with, and everything else is working as well. Now if I take the camera lens off, there we go, we can actually see the camera's working too. Fantastic. Okay, so let me just turn it off. So to set the menu up, what we're going to do is I'm going to press and hold the button on this. Uh, you might be able to see it on the camera. In naked eye you can't. There we go. Flashing away. So I need to just have that pointed at the receiver and it will go into calibration mode for the first bit. So let me have that running away. Power it up. There we go. Remote controller setup. So now we just have to follow. Press the button for menu. Press again to save. Up down, 
back. Ooh, shoot. Reload. Okay. Okay, so now we're actually in the system. So if I press menu, we now have the ability to set everything up and how it's going to work. So now it's all done. Join me in the next video where hopefully we'll have another one of these in another plane and we can start flying around. But this is really, really exciting. I'm very, very pleased that this has gone in and works as good as this. It could provide a whole new level of FPV fun when I'm at the field with my friends. So hopefully I'll see you next time. I'll put a link down below to the little playlist that this is going to be part of and I'll see you next time where we'll see this in action in flight. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media and if you're trying to learn about a subject then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.